2015, an elite DFS Army Commando unit formed to bring high-level DFS strategy to the masses. Today, hated by DFS sharks and lineup sellers alike, they continue their quest to turn Joe into DFS Pro. Good afternoon, everybody. This is your DFS Army Daily Dispatch brought to you by DFSArmy.com. And I am your host today, Boomer's Daddy. Joining me is the one, the only, Mr. Bear here. What's up, Shy? Hey, man. How are you? Oh, it's been a rough morning. I got a little one that's uh, contracted a little bit of a, a cold. He's sick, got runny oh. nose again. Seems like we go two weeks with the runny nose, one week off. Two weeks on, one week off. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's allergies. I don't know if it's you know. It's just being, it's just being a kid, man. That's how they. That's how it is. Uh, they all go. They all go through it. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I mean, it, it happens. But this one seems to look, be a little bit uh, kicking his butt a little bit more than the normal ones. Um, so. But, uh, yeah, so he wants nothing to do with daddy. He wants all of his mama, uh, yeah. which is understandable. When I get sick, I want her to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, daddy can do nothing right and mama can do no wrong. Yeah, that's the way it works, man. <laughs> that's the way it oh, works. man. Nice little five-game slate. You want to go game by game here today? Whatever you want, man. I'm open. All right. Let's... Uh, yeah, let's let's keep the same format. Let's go position by position. Um, I wasn't ready to go bank game by game, but uh, you know, let's let's keep it here. So, um, start at the point guard position. I uh, it's uh, <laughs> we I guess we could say this about the full slate. It there, there's not a lot of high end talent today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've really only got Damian Lillard up here. So. Uh, you know, as far as elite, and he's almost 10K at, on, on FanDuel, um, uh, you know, goes against, we actually don't even know who he's going against. <laughs> There's a lot, of, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of Mavs guards there that are questionable. So, you know, assuming Dennis Smith Jr. is healthy, um, I certainly like the matchup for Lillard, although um, over the season, uh, Dennis has been improving defensively, had a huge shot block to win the game versus uh, versus the Clippers. That was impressive. Yeah, yeah. That was really impressive. Uh, but it was really more of his athletic ability. The guy's always been able to jump through the gym, right? I mean, that's – and he just out-jumped uh, – I forgot who it was that he blocked. may have been Gilgis. I don't remember. But um, I thought it was Lou, but it could have been Gilgis. Yeah, I think, actually, I think it was Gilgis or Tobias. It was one of the two of them. But, uh, yeah, he blocked it. I mean – with his abilities, anyways, I think uh, um, there's going to be a common uh, kind of build here, considering what you just said, which is there's not much elite talent to point guard. You're going to see a lot of people just kind of paying down for the values. And there are a few of them, and we'll talk about those. Um, so, you know, in tournaments, I like the idea of paying up for Damien. This game is, I mean, uh, it's uh, spread as a point and a half, and it's actually in Dallas's favor. I like Lillard when they're behind. That's exactly when I want to play Lillard. Um, you know, it's second highest total by a slim margin. Uh, right below it is that Spurs Utah at 216. This one's 16 and a half. Um, so uh, with the first one being 223. And so yeah, I mean, I think uh, there's a lot to a lot to like about putting playing Lillard here in tournaments. I love Lillard in tournaments. Um, I don't particularly like the fact that he's 9900, but I mean, <laughs> I, I don't have to pay for Russ or Durant or Davis right. or exactly. LeBron. So exactly. I mean, he's really your only stuff. Yeah, exactly. So um, I think he's going to be high owned. If he's going to be high owned, I don't mind fading him uh, or either that or you're going to have to get creative in order to um, or you're going to have to get creative in order to uh, make sure that 
what he does is unique, um, especially in tournaments tonight. So, yeah, agree. I think there's going to be a lot of people trying to get cute and not play him. Um, I even like playing him in cash, to be honest, for that exact reason. Like, there's one stud you, you, in cash. You play him. I mean, that's just <laughs> I mean, yeah the way it goes, right? So, yep, absolutely. Um, all right, what are your thoughts on Deer and Fox? So I've been getting uh, different, you know, opinions by different people, and you know, I typically like to pull folks and kind of get their opinions so I can hear different uh, different thoughts and maybe a different perspective that I may not have been looking at. Um, I don't. I mean, he's probably one of the better point guards here outside of Lillard. Uh, obviously, he's priced that way. Um, Gets an elite matchup versus the Suns. A lot of people are going to kind of assume that that game gets blown out. And you know what? It very well could be. Phoenix is really, really shorthanded, minus their best player and their second best scorer, uh, Booker and Warren. Um, and so uh, it's so it was no. They were both pretty much doubtful before Vegas put out their their uh, their numbers. And they only favored Sack by five and a half. Yeah, something's fishy about that. Yeah, so I'm trying to say, well, we know Bagley is out for Sacramento. Okay. Yeah, but does Bagley accumulate for two no, points? No, 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 no. I'm not done yet. I'm not. Of course he does. <laughs> Bagley doesn't accumulate. I don't. I, I mean, he's a fant- fantastic player, but they don't need Bagley to beat this team by ten, right? So that's what I'm getting at. Is there something else fishy, like you said? We're going to have to see what that is. I mean, you know, I'm not saying anything like Fox is going to get a day off, but if I'm the coach and I know that this team is shorthanded, I'm looking at this one of two ways. Number one, maybe I can rest one of my guys. That's probably the reason why Bagley sat, to be frank. Number two, I'm thinking about it as, yeah, they're, they're down to two of their best players. They're not a very good team record-wise. They've been getting trucked by most of the league but this is still an nba team now these are all some of the best basketball players in the world that are playing on this team now they might be the lower end of the best basketball players in the world but they're still in the best in the world category so as a coach and i know this because i spent a lot of time with basketball coaches not nba but uh, college high school etc the one thing you never want to do is underestimate a team it's a big mistake you go in there thinking ah we're going to beat these guys. You get your ass beat that way. Yeah, you get I mean, we talked about the Cavs doing that a couple of years ago to Memphis. That's right. Uh, Oklahoma City's done it to Dallas before and gone in and got beat. So it, it can happen. Um, it happens a lot. And so that's where I'm thinking, okay, if the field is looking at this game like uh, a blowout and Fox is not going to garner that much ownership, I like Fox that much more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've got five games today. I don't think any of them is fadeable. I'm not going to try to... I don't predict blowouts anyways, but I'm definitely not going to try to predict a blowout on a five-game slate. Um, and this is the only... You know, this in the Utah-San Antonio game, um, you know, is... They're the they're your late-night hammers. I mean, we've got a nice little spread today, uh, if you want to mm-hmm. say. you got a 7, a 7.30, a 8.30, a 9, and another 9. So yeah. it's going to be a nice, constant little night. Um, I, I would tend to agree with you on that, that, uh, you know, De'Aaron Fox is firmly in play for me, especially with the way he's been playing this season. Um, and, you know, you give the opponent as well. Uh, I mean, 7,900 is not – okay, so I, I want everybody to do this exercise, okay? Wherever you are, unless you're driving in your car, or you're operating heavy machinery. I want you to take a deep breath, breathe in, breathe out, and forget everything you know about pricing and value today. Pricing because of the teams playing and the players on the slate, in my opinion, in tournaments, pricing is irrelevant. Because you can build any lineup you want. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay up. You don't Mm -hmm. have to pay down. So your normal guys that, you know, your value guys aren't going to be as highly owned because you don't need to go in and fit a studs and scrubs. If you want to fade everybody over 8K today, then do it. I mean, you you have a lot of different ways that you can go about it. But 
forget everything that you know about a traditional type of value because it's not going to help today. Okay, now that we've done that, let's move on to one of my favorite op- er, point guards of the night, Ricky Rubio. Mm-hmm. I think there's going to be a perception about Rubio being that he plays for Utah, being that this game is in Utah, being that they go are playing the San Antonio Spurs, that um, the the Jazz, this game is going to be very, very slow-paced, uh, could possibly not even hit 200. And when you look at it, they actually have the second highest total on the board. Or third highest, sorry. But they're only a point behind uh, Dallas and Portland. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I, I, like, I like it a lot here. I think uh, just... To, to kind of tack on to what you're saying, I think the, the continued perception that these two teams are defensive juggernauts and they play at the slowest pace um, is what's going to potentially give us a little bit of an advantage here. Um, you know, Portland and Dallas, two teams that you wouldn't think are defensive juggernauts either. I mean, they're not poor defensive teams, although Portland certainly is to certain spots, uh, as is Dallas. But um, that game is 216 and a half. Spurs Jazz is 216. So, you know, kind of kind of gives you an understanding there of you know, what the, what basically what the numbers tell you. And what I like about Rubio is that Rubio they're 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 fully healthy now, right? The Jazz are. When Mitchell sits, he's got to do more offensively. He's not comfortable offensively. I mean, he's just at least in terms of creating his own offense. Right, he's a facilitator. He's got elite assists upside, elite steals upside, <clears throat> and when the defense is focused on Mitchell and Gobert and um, Crowder and Ingles, that's when Rubio gets some open shots, and that's when Rubio can actually do more than 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 what he would do when he's alone. Um, <clears throat> you couple that with the Spurs. I mean, just defensively are have been atrocious, and I'm being polite there. I mean, you look at every single spot there, uh, you know, from uh, point guard, shooting guard. I mean, they don't have a lockdown defender really on that team. DeRozan is a phenomenal athlete. He's definitely not a defender. Uh, he's more of an offensive guy. So, yeah, I mean, I mean to me, I, in fact, I like a lot of this game. I think, again, the perception will be that this game is going to be low and slow and blah, blah, blah. Nah. Love love the value pieces from this game on both sides. Yeah, I would agree with you. Um, I I think there's a lot of different options of ways we can go. I will have probably a couple teams with, uh, you know, that fade the first two games of the night and they just stack these late teams, um, you know, to try to get different ownership combinations in in my tournaments and stuff, you know, uh, there's, (laughs) there's a lot of different ways that you can go with this. And it's just kind of one of those things like, uh, um, it's just kind of one of those things with uh, all these different pieces that we can grab. Like I, I, (laughs) it's not, optimal i don't think but i'm i've got a little bit of interest in Derek white as well um going up against the jazz um so do i uh all right let's talk about one more guy here uh and then we'll talk about Derek white um eli okobo this is where your your cast chalk point guard is going to be um you know fandle he's at Priced at a very fair 4700 without Booker. He's going to be the starting point guard. It's already been announced. He's going to play 30 minutes a game in a really, really nice pace in um, <clears throat> excuse me in the Hammer game. Uh, that's the highest total on the board. I mean, there's a lot to like about Okobo. Um, you know, for me, I think he is should be a staple in all of your cash builds because he just opens up everything else for you. You certainly can pair him up with Lillard. Um, makes it easier to build the rest of the roster pretty pretty uh, 
you know, even evenly. Um, I'll be under a weight in, tur- in tournaments. Uh, I just I don't I don't see him putting up a fifty. And frankly, if I'm going to put a player in the tournament outside of my drop score for for, for Fanduel, I want a guy that has the ability to put up fifty, and I don't think he does. I would agree. Uh, he's not at that price to where he's an immense value to where right. um, you can, uh, you know, profit off of what he's going to do. So uh, it's just, you know, one of those things like I- I'll probably be underweight in tournaments as well. I, I would rather go down to uh, a Derek White, who I think is more talented of a player, or a Bryn Forbes, who if Derek White gets into trouble or Pop decides to be Pop, you know, you can pull that out. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of different different uh wow hi cam (laughs) he can't hear you but he's watching mickey um yes my son woke up during our point guard discussion so um but you've got you know you've got a lot of different ways you can go uh with that so um patty mills is another guy i have interest in um, I, I would say that there's really nobody that's off the table. Um, I, I just, yeah. when, when you look at it, like, even if I could make a case for Jerry and Grant tonight, if you wanted to pay 3,600 and, and hope that, you know, uh, Orlando's getting blown out for whatever reason, or like, there's a lot of different things that you can say, yeah. That with the slate like today, I don't think that you can you can necessarily argue with and say that one way is right right or wrong. So so here are your minimum priced or near minimum priced guys in advance to the court at point guard. You've got Bryn Forbes, you've got Patty Mills, you've got Jerry and Grant, you've got Cameron Payne, you've got Devin Harris, you've got Seth Curry. You've got Shaq Harrison and you got Roland Neto. Those are the guys that are at between 35 and 3,800 that are not going to play 25 minutes, although Forbes might. Um, and if Mills gets hot, Mills will as well. But outside of that, I don't I don't see – by the way, I really like what Patty Mills has been doing lately. So, we'll, we'll, you know, keep an eye out for him. Um, but those are the guys you can just kind of throw in there and – Maybe, you know, have them as a drop score candidate, and if they go off, great. You have At least you have an opportunity. I, I'm not for punting just to punt. If I'm right. going to punt, if I'm going to punt, at least make sure my punt is going to see the floor. If it's 12 minutes, okay, it's 12 minutes. But at least you saw the court versus a guy that was, like, called down to the G League and not even with the team. Yeah, I, I need I need a punt with upside. So Absolutely. Like you said, and a Patty Mills, a Jerry and Grant, who we, we've known – and I think this season has gone off for 35, uh, 40 points. So I've got to I've got to have upside if I'm going to punt today. And here's the thing about Mills too: um, when you, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> when you uh, when you talk about the Spurs, there's always a chance where the starters aren't doing it, and Pop makes those wholesale changes like three minutes into the game, and all of a sudden Patty Mills plays 28 minutes. So, I mean, you got to factor that in there, too. It's a possibility. Yep, I would agree. So, all right, let's move on to shooting guard here. Uh, DeMar DeRozan's up at the top. He's 8,400. He's going against the Utah Jazz. <sighs> you have the same inclination. I, I don't. I don't like this at all. Like, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, it's not that I dislike it, right? It's not that it's like it. It's it's really more along the lines of I just I think I actually think he's going to be pretty high ownership today. Um, DeRozan just came off a what was it fifty five point game fantasy point game. Um, it's so let me put it this way: in cash you can play him, no problem. In tournaments. I'm going to make a pivot to a guy that absolutely, I can't curse on this thing, but you know what me, um, in my uh, in my Q live I knew, final. I knew you were. I knew exactly and, what you were going to do. And, and listen, <laughs> and listen, 
I'm a DFS player. I don't let emotions get in the way the next day. Now, during the slate, yeah, absolutely, I'm a mess when I'm, when I'm playing high stakes. But when I'm not, when I'm building my lineups, he, he literally had a floor game, and I was the only one that owned him in a situation where I needed 10 more points out of him, and I would have won the damn thing. And you know what I'm doing today? I'm going right back to him. And that's Zach Levine. Yep. I love Zach Levine. I love what he's been doing. Um, and we've talked about him a lot. Uh, no Victor Oladipo tonight, so we won't have to see that worry uh, anymore. It's it's not. I I tend to think I tend to think the opposite of you. I think that Levine's going to be higher owned than DeRozan. Um, really? Yeah, just because of the perception that we've talked about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um. It's just kind of one of those things, and there's always that perception of, you know, pop being pop. So, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, listen, even on games when pop popped, De- Demar still saw his minutes. So, oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean, mean he's, I, I would say that Lamar or uh, D- Lamar Demar is is pretty pretty safe as far as the minutes is concerned. Um, it's just whether or not he's gonna, you know, actually be good to perform. Sure. So I have interest in Donovan Mitchell, um, but I'm not playing him in the same lineup as Rubio. Unless it's like a game stack situation. I would much rather pay for a CJ McCollum, Luka Doncic, uh, Buddy Heald, Bogdanovich, you know, um, these guys, like the mid tier range is kind of where I'm landing as far as my shooting guard core today. Yeah. I mean, got Wesley Matthews. We'll have to see who doesn't play for, for Dallas is if, if both of the guards play, then I, I probably can't play Matthews cause he just doesn't touch the ball when those guys are in the game. Um, so here are my mid tier guys. You've got both of the Kings guards, Buddy, Buddy and Bogey. You've got Dwayne Wade. I don't mind Terrence Ross in tournaments. You've got Wayne Ellington. And then you got a guy that I think will not be touched in tournaments that I'm really interested in. Okay, who would that be? Evan Fournier. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I like it a little bit more. Um, we have to see the heat situation. Rodney Magruder is questionable. Frankly, he he didn't look very good uh, when he went down with that game. So yeah, I, I I know Tyler Johnson's available. I don't, exactly. I don't know about Rodney Magruder yet. Uh, Derek Jones Jr. is available as well. So, but uh, yeah, that Magruder that Magruder play was bad, dude. Like, it was pretty ugly. Yeah. So having said that, I, I mean that gives me a little more interest in Wade. Um, you know, Magruder sits. You'll probably see a little bit more out of uh, Justice Winslow, who's in the small four, who we'll talk about. But Tyler I mean, Johnson yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean Tyler will certainly play. I mean, it, you know, he's kind of seems like even in games where you know some of the guards there were missing, he still didn't really play that much. I mean, he get he gets the usage and the opportunities because he's they still keep him in the second unit. But uh, I mean, let's just be honest, man. It's it's Jay Rich's job to be the point guard at that point. So oh yeah, absolutely. That's what he does. So. Uh, yeah. Any so, interest with the uh, with the way that the Suns are banged up and Jamal Crawford? You know what, man? Not really. And I only say not really because uh, you know, even with them being banged up, he's just not seeing plus minutes. I mean, he's at twenty, twenty two. I mean, I've seen a little bit here, I've seen a little bit there, but not so sure, man. Uh, how about Troy Daniels for min price? See, uh, that could see around 18 to 20 minutes with uh, everybody out as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's – okay, so for those of you that don't know who Troy Daniels is, first off, Troy Daniels is the ultimate troll player uh, on the Suns. Has been for, what, two years now? <laughs> uh, every time that we think – or that Devin Booker's out and we think that somebody else is going to perform uh, in Booker's – place uh troy daniels comes in and drops eight threes um 
I'm pretty much kidding, but not really. <laughs> no, that's pretty um, much what it does. And he's a shooter. He's Jamal Crawford 10 years ago. Um, that's something that you have to take into consideration. And he's min price. Uh, I'm going to see 18 to 22 minutes. Perfect drop score candidate on FanDuel. Uh, lock and load. Agreed. I'm going to have a lot of uh, Troy Daniels. And it's not because I have to have it. It's just because I think with uh, the the way that the slate's kind of, you know, out, um, you know, I don't think anybody's going to think that they need to go there. And if it gets me off of, uh, if it gets me around being able to have an unchalky roster construction, then I'm all for it. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. So, all right, let's move on to the small forward. Hey, yeah, Josh mm-hmm. Richardson, top player of the day at the position, correct? Oh, yeah, hands down. Yeah, and it's not even close for me. Um, and that has nothing to do with price or anything. It has everything to do with the usage, uh, especially with, you know, the way that the heat are banged up. But um, I, I I just... Hands down. Yeah. I don't think it's I don't think it's close enough. It's, it's not. A um, couple other guys I do have interest in, though. Uh, Tyreek Evans um is kind of popping on the ds i want to go back and look and see exactly you know what i know earlier at the first part when victor oladipo went out um Mm -hmm. a lot of evans wasn't being used in the fourth quarter and it had a, a lot to do with blowouts um i need to go back and check and double check and make sure that that's exactly the reason why he still hasn't been uh performing yeah um oh it is no, no, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. You have to go back and look. Yep. Um, okay. So, but, you know, it hasn't, I know the upside is there mm-hmm. and I'm waiting for it. The price is still right. I know he can hit 30 to 35. It's just, when is he going to do it? And this could be, this could be that night. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree. So. Um, also, one thing about him is that uh, so the last game, uh, as you, if you recall, it was it was Dwayne Wade that kind of went nuts, um, you know, and willed them to the win there. And I know that um, uh, Dwayne Wade was like, yeah, you know, this was this is one I took, but he's basically said he's trying to kind of hand the reins off to Richardson, like he wants him to be kind of you know the team's Dwayne Wade moving forward. I mean, that tells you a lot right there. Yeah, I, I mean, it, young or old guys don't usually like uh, passing the buck onto the new, new guys. But uh, Wade understands and knows that you know this is his time. It's his yeah. swan song, as you will. Yeah. And now you're building your legacy uh, on what type of teammate you were later on in your career. So um, Jabari Parker, I'm actually saying no, thank you to Jabari. I'm not playing Jabari, uh, especially now with him going to the bench. Not that I think that it's a bad move that he's going to the bench, but I, he, I, he's, in my opinion, he's not playing well right now. Um, it, the the production might be there, but it is. It, it's he he still doesn't look comfortable to me. Like, he doesn't look like he did last year. Yeah. Um, and it might be, it might have been the system that Hoiberg was running. Maybe that was it. It He looks healthy, just not comfortable. Um, so, for me, it, it's, I, I think he's going to have a lot of ownership. Because of the fact that, you know, the, the top end isn't that heavy, I just don't think that I'm going to be one of those guys that's going to gonna be there. If Jabari Parker's the guy that beats me, then so be it for me. So let me let me kind of give you my take on Jabari. I think now, uh, now that he's going back to the bench, the way DFS works is when a guy goes from starter to the bench, nobody touches him. That is my only interest. That is my only I take. I can see that now. That's it. Nothing else. I I can see that. Yeah. So 
Uh, okay. Um, so why do you like Tyreek so much? I just know that the upside's there, and I think after, you know, when you – a lot of the game log watchers are, are going to be kind of just sitting there yeah. being like, okay, this guy hasn't broke 25, and he's 5,300. You know, I'm, I'm not going to play him. Um, to give you an idea – it's the same thing I, I I'll say with Larry Nance. It's the same like the guys that the public starts to get off of. Um, I tend to kind of gravitate to in tournaments because Tyreek didn't just forget how to play basketball. Yeah. Um, I don't like the minutes for Tyreek. I mean, if you sit there and you look at them, you've got. You know, he finally played 29 minutes last game against Sacramento. Uh, I just don't think he shot well. I'd have to look again. Um, he played 24 against the Lakers, 27 against Phoenix. Like, yeah. one of these games, he's going to get back to being aggressive and taking over. Sure. And he's going to dominate a quarter and a half. Uh, he's going to dominate a rotation or two. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like we know. Larry Nance has 40 points upside and i'm gonna i'm not going to let a guy that just you know has a bad week or you know other situations dictate it dictate whether or not i'm gonna play the guy yeah that makes sense um and i, and I agree and i actually have him in a build or two for that exact reason again you and i are very similar in that when when we're when we're playing tournaments, that's that's what we're looking for. We're looking for somebody sub ten percent. And if you can find someone sub ten percent on a ten gamer, it's phenomenal news. Mm-hmm. Um, you talked about Nance yesterday. Guess what Nance finally put up? Twenty six. Uh, Twenty six. And you know how many minutes he did it in? Sixteen. No, yep. So he, believe me, he he knows, he hears, he sees <laughs> what he's been doing. These guys know it. I mean. Just go search him on Twitter. All of the DFS players are talking like he's, you know, a catastrophe. And it's the same for, like, if you look at Tyreek Evans, all it is, all I hear is he's horrible, he's, he sucks, he can't play anymore, he can't shoot, he lost his touch, he blah, 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 blah. These guys hear that stuff, man. They do. They're, these NBA players, most of them, are younger generation. They're all over Twitter. It's, it's part of the generation. So they see that. Oh yeah, I would I would agree with you 150 million percent. So, um, any interest in Joe Ingles? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Having Joe Ingles, um, you know, it's kind of one of those where I think I want to pair Ingles with Rubio if you want to avoid Mitchell. Yep. But um, or maybe even him and Crowder possibly. Or him and Gobert, maybe you know that kind of thing. <clears throat> I actually, I mean, there's another power forward hero from from them in favors that I also really like uh, because I think you're going to see favors being the better matchup with Aldridge. Um, and so I think you're going to see a lot, a lot of favors there, um, and that'll do him some favors. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> so I, I think, I think, uh, yeah. I mean, I listen as you saw by my other night uh key entry i definitely love angles yep absolutely uh and it's kind of go back to what screwed you uh don't let the recency bias kind of take over um your your decision making uh we did hear that evan turner is in so that's going to put a little bit of uh my shame on mo harkless yeah um i was really kind of hoping that you know, we didn't hear anything about Evans, and then he was ruled out after lock, and I could have all the Moharkless. Yeah. Uh, that is not going to be the case anymore. Um, Mikael Bridges, uh, 4300 on FanDuel. Uh, I think he's even cheaper over on DK. Super value play there, guys. Super value play. Yeah, he's he's going to play all the minutes that he can, he yeah. can handle. So. Absolutely there he is. Absolutely he is. Uh, all right, let's move on to the power forward spot here. Um, I there, okay, so the two of us and our fellow NBA resident Luce Meister uh, at the beginning of the season, beginning of the season, like 
45 days ago, a month and a half ago, uh, we had a very heated discussion about Josh Jackson. Yes, And did. whether or not he was a, a quality basketball player. Yes, we did. Uh, we, let the, we let the bed lie. And now that he's in the flow of the season, and now that he's getting a, uh, what's, the, what's the word, crap ton? Uh, crap ton of minutes. Uh, he has taken that discussion and uh, proved us right. Now I'm not afraid to say this because uh, one, I, I I'm not scared of loose, and two, because <laughs> I know that we are now right. Um, and three, I know that he doesn't listen to the show consistently. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Josh Jackson is going to be your chalk. With yeah. what he's done lately, uh, the price is not going to scare anybody off of him. Nope. Um, he is going to be your chalk in cash. I, I would say eat it. He's been outperforming the salary that he, the current salary that he's at mm-hmm. now. He's been outperforming it for what uh, a week, something yeah. like that. I, yeah. I don't know exactly, but he's been outperforming it. Yeah, no. Listen, like you said, he's in the flow of the season. He's he's. I think identify because we got to keep in mind, and we talked about this on yesterday's podcast. A lot of these players, have, a lot of these teams, rather, have new players, new coaches, new systems, new you know, new everything, um, all the above. So you know, having said that, I mean the fact that um, this is where we are with him. Like I, I can see him at some point being like a sixty-five hundred to seven K player. You know, um, moving forward, if he keeps doing what he's doing. So uh, maybe not seven, but at least in the sixes. So we get him at a discount. So for cash, yeah, I have him in some tournaments as well. I'm not scared to play that. I think he has the upside there. Um, but I can also see merit to, to, you know, maybe sliding over to like a Wendell Carter, for example, uh, for 200 more instead and, you know, giving that a try in tournaments. Absolutely. That was kind of where I was leading to this. Wendell Carter's in a smash spot as well. He's been uh, one of my favorite players, rookies of the season so far. Um, he was the topic of a couple heated debates that we had in the NBA staff as well. You guys think that we just all like agree and we all, no, we, we get into pre, some pretty heated debates in the staff and it's all in good fun. So, um, there is very limited agreeing going on <laughs> <laughs> because we all have different views. We've all been successful with these views. So like we're all very, very, and we're all very stubborn. Um, so yeah. it's one of those things. Uh, I love Wendell Carter. I also love the mm-hmm. sticker shock that people are going to be like, Oh, Lori market at 6,200. Like, yeah, he was a plug and play the other day on FanDuel. It was a mispriced. He was still unbelievably low owned for what I thought he was going to be or what he should be. Uh, play 26 minutes. I think he gets up to that 30 mark. Now he's starting. Um, I have no problems going back to Lori marketing. Uh, like you said, Thad <laughs> Young is in play. Yep. Uh, Derek Favors. I mean, there's a lot to like um, here. I I wanted to skip over the GPP play of the day at the position. Okay. Um, and I wanted to talk about the the combination of James Johnson, Kelly Olynyk. I didn't. I thought I heard something about James Johnson being questionable. He is. Okay. He's got some sort of illness. But he was – so I think he plays because he started off as doubtful and then they upgraded him. Okay. Um, I missed him on my initial injury report, so I was thinking the opposite. I was thinking he was getting downgraded throughout the day. So that changes my um, – that changes my thinking a little bit on that. I like Kelly Olenek in fast-paced games with no defense. Um, I don't like Kelly Olenek against Aaron Gordon tonight because of of Aaron Gordon's length. But if for any reason James Johnson is, for some reason, ruled out, Mm -hmm. I think I might like Bam over Kelly. Am I crazy? Well, first of all, you're crazy no matter what. But second of all, um, no, I don't think so. Listen, Kelly just came off a huge game. Kelly just won some several people a ton of money. Fast so, pace. Yeah, Very no, fast pace. I know that. You and I know that, right? I'm just saying that's why people are going to go back to him. Because they're going to say, oh, he did what last game? Wow. And they're going to play him. Yeah. 
which, that, which is agreed. It was a different pace. <clears throat> this game, I, I believe, suits Bam a lot more as well. I also think, I mean, let, let's look at the personnel on the other side of the court, right? You've got, I mean, he's, he's not going to start, so you're not going to have him, um, you know, too much matching up with uh, with Vooch, but but they're going to bring in Bamba. And they're going to need, they're going to, you're going to put Kelly Olenek on Bamba? No. <laughs> So it's going to be Bam, and I think that's where I think you can. And no one's Bam has been priced up. So two things on Fanduel, he's been priced up to forty nine hundred. Number two, they moved him to power forward. He was center all season. I think that might actually increase his ownership a tad, because now you don't have to take up your center spot in order to lose or use him. Lamarcus, Josh Jackson. I know. I I get Gordon, what you're saying. Wendell Carter, Laurie Markkinen. I mean. How is any? How is he going to listen? I'm not saying zero. But I said it's going to boost it a tad. Where it would be minuscule at the center position, it might double, like three percent. Yes. <laughs> I just th- I don't think he's going to go overlooked at the power forward position. I just think people are going to choose not to play him at the position unless, like, both Kelly and James Johnson are are ruled out. Sure, that makes sense. So, um. But like he wasn't even going to be thought. He wasn't even going to be a thought in anybody's mind at the center position, um, you know, before that. So, um, okay. Can we talk about Harry Giles here? Yeah, we should. Okay. So the other night we had got word that um, Harry Giles. Or not Harry Giles. Um, Marvin Bagley was uh, doubtful. Yep. And that um, uh, even though Kufis was going to be back, we kind of looked at that rotation and said, well, they want to play young guys, so they're wanting to play. They're, you know, Giles is going to get some minutes. Um, for whatever reason, unbeknownst to us, uh Harry Giles ended up having a did not play coach's decision. I, if you're rolling lineups out there, I I think you can go back to him. Um, I can't recommend him with good confidence because of the fact that, you know, this is the first Dave Yeager move that he's pulled this season. But, uh, you know, it's, um, it's something that is a very weird situation that uh, I'm, I'm not sure kind of what to deal with, but I have to, I had to touch on it because he's going to be a, co- a topic of conversation as well. He should be. I mean, look, last game, like you said, when, when he was ruled out, it, it was the well, badly was ruled out. It was a situation where, you know, cool guys time right now. I'm the only crazy one like 0.9% in large field that played Kufus because it was too big of a coincidence for me that as they're considering playing Bagley or not, that they activated him. Yeah. You know, it just kind of added up. So I played him and, and to be blunt, he got the minutes. He just didn't put up very many numbers, but he got the minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, And we've, you and I, uh, most of us have seen those Kufus troll games, all of our lives, I mean, all of a sudden, he, you know, nobody's radar, and he puts up 45. Like, where the hell did that come from? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's it's one of those situations where, like you said, I think you can play, you can go back to Giles because I think this game might be a little bit different. I think in this game you're going to see a little bit more Giles. I think it's a lot of a lot of young players on the court on both sides here. Uh, Phoenix is super, super, super young, and they're going to draw all their young guys when they're, you know, so, so beat up and so banged up. And so, um, I'm a little more confident in, in, in Giles here. Yep, I would say that that's a pretty good way to do it. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart, though. Just want to point that out again. Uh, all right, let's move on to the center position. Uh, Nikola Vucevic is 9,700. He's the top player of the day. I don't think it's actually, honestly, even close. Yeah, I mean, listen, <laughs> it's just, look at what he's done, man. I mean, it's he's been a beast. This is his best season. He's been 
doing it on both ends. He's been virtually unstoppable. I mean, it's it's going to be tough. Uh, you know, I like I like the other side of that matchup as well. Uh, in tournaments, I'll have some some white side shares. Um, you know, obviously not if I'm playing Bam, but if I'm playing white side, I'm not going to play Bam and vice versa. But um, I have a little bit of interest in some other centers here too. But I mean, for me, it's it's obviously he's the highest price, but he's the biggest stud here and at the position. Yep, uh, Rudy Gobert, he's back. Yeah, he is, man. And and you know the funny thing is, he never left. Uh, I mean, <laughs> he was he was he was. I can't even put it up, put it just on him. I think it's more of a situation where him and the team and the coach were trying to figure out defensively how they want to handle things. Um, but the last three games, 49.6, 53.4, 60.7, a little bit of a letdown game versus Indiana at 25, and then versus Sacramento, 47.5. I mean, he's he's been on a tear. Now, one of the things that you look at here, like, for example, versus Miami – there was a tr- there was a true center that that's why Whiteside did so well because it was true center versus true center, and that's where Gobert excels in the true center matchups. Um, in Charlotte, they just plummeted them. Um, you know, Brooklyn all centers do well versus Brooklyn, but my point here is that they're going up against the Spurs, and the Spurs don't have a true center that's in their starting unit. They have Pirtle, but Pirtle barely plays 15 minutes a game. LaMarcus Aldridge is basically the guy going up against him. Now, like I said before, I think I think um, Snyder is going to play more favors on Aldridge. And frankly, that is a mismatch for Gobert because he's really their only big. Right? It's, it's White and or Forbes, wherever they start there, DeRozan, Rudy Gay, Dante Cunningham, or Bertans, and then LaMarcus Aldridge. If it's Bertans, I could maybe see Gobert guarding Bertans. But either way, in my opinion, I think it's kind of a bad matchup for Gobert. Yeah, I I was hoping that you would get there and lead there. I don't like Gobert tonight. Um, I probably will not have him. If I'm paying 9500 for a center, I'm paying for Booch. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, all right, Willie Collis Stein with all this injury news and everything going against Phoenix. He's probably going to be your chalk center of the night. Uh, I, I think that's a good thing to kind of take into consideration. Um, right behind him is probably going to be DeAndre Ayton. I uh, don't mind it there either. Um, I'm actually looking at, and I can't believe I'm freaking going to say this. Um. I'm looking at Yusef Nurkic and Miles Turner as my two staples tonight. Okay. I I love the way that Miles Turner has finally been playing. He looks like he's actually um, got his head in the game. Um, three of the last four have been, you know, very, very, very nicely produced. Mm-hmm. The only thing I'm worried about is him being unsmart again as I, I mean, try to try to use my words lively and uh commit <laughs> and getting into foul trouble really quick. Yeah. Cuz as soon as that happens he he becomes irrelevant and the flow of the, his flow, his flow within the game is completely destroyed. Yeah. Um Here's the thing. You can say the same exact thing about Nurk and Turner. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, literally, they're like the same player. Not not in terms of their games, but in terms of the, you know, foul trouble they get in so frequently. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, it's... it's uh, I, I like them both. I think I like I like uh, Nurk a little bit more here uh, than I do Miles, just because I think they end up going a little bit smaller, um, and you know might have a lot more uh, Sabonis out there. But um, yeah, I mean, 
It's uh, I, I think the cash chalk will actually be Aiton over Cauley Stein. I mean, he's a little bit cheaper. Um, he's been priced down actually significantly. I don't like Aiton myself. Uh, number one, I don't like him versus Cauley Stein. Number two, I don't like him because um, he's looked really uncomfortable lately. Like, I've been watching their games, um, and, like, he's been missing layups at the rim and just, like, little small teardrop shots that they, or little, little baby hooks, rather, like four or five feet away and that he usually drains, and he just looks off. I don't know if it's a rookie thing. I don't know if it's maybe just so much attention on him with Booker out, I, you know, one of those things, but he's just he looks like he's really struggled, and Collie Stein's a good defender, and I know they're they're not good – um, you know, DVP wise at the center position, but that's what I mean. That's what Willie does. He's he plays defense. He doesn't do anything else. I mean, you know, dunks and stuff, sure, as a center. But um, I, I don't I don't know that I like Aiton very much here. Okay. Uh, any interest in uh, DeAndre Jordan? Um, only time I had interest in him was when he was playing the Clippers. You know, and that worked out pretty well. Uh, I kind of think now. Versus Portland, he kind of goes back to his nonchalant ways. So. I would tend to agree. So, all right, that's going to do it for us today. I forgot what I was about to say, but uh, that's because I'm getting coughed in my face. Um, all right, guys, that's going to do it for us today. For myself, for Bear, for the DFS Army, we go.